Welcome to our virtual first Thursday event. My name is Josh Estes and I'll be your host here for this evening. On the first Thursday of every month, the museum opens its doors from 4 to 8 p.m. at a significantly reduced rate of just $5 per person per visit. This opportunity allows families, no matter their economic situation, the chance to explore and make memories at the museum. It's made possible by the generous support of our presenting sponsor, Delta Dental of Indiana, and supporting sponsor, Donato's Pizza, and through the philanthropic support of all of our donors. As a community leader, the museum has chosen to shut its doors temporarily to protect our visitors, our staff, and our volunteers. This means we can't have our first Thursday event in person, but it doesn't mean we can't bring the museum to you. Yeah, over the course of this show, we'll have an incredible lineup of museum experts. We'll have giveaways. Can someone say Donato's Pizza? <laughs> and activities for you and your family. Now, more than ever, as we are all struggling through this unprecedented time, it's important for us to bring the mission to you and hopefully bring your family some joy and smiles along the way. Okay, here's what we have in store for you this evening. We're going to uh, kick it off with our science educator, Becky Wolf, who's going to be making a plant cell pizza. <laughs> Can't wait to see that. We're also going to head down to our Dinosphere virtually and check in with Dinosphere staff, Luke Skolsky, who's going to help us become a T-Rex. <laughs> that sounds fun, too. And then we're going to get our bodies up and moving with our Riley Children's Health Sports Legends Experience coach, Derek Richter. Ooh, get ready, get ready. And we're going to have some giveaways throughout the whole night, maybe like every 10 minutes or so. Here's how those uh, giveaways are going to work. They're, they're going to be giving away uh, $25 Donato's gift cards. What you're going to do is uh, I'm going to be asking a, a question to you, and uh, you'll just comment down below. I'll read some of those comments off. And at the end of the night, a member of our social media team will contact you to see if you're a winner of a $25 gift card or at the end of the night, we're going to give away a museum membership. Okay, I think it's time for that first giveaway. A uh, question for you is, uh, what city are you joining us from? Go ahead and comment, and then I'll read off a few of those, and we'll have your name in for a $25 gift card from Donato's Pizza. Okay, let's see who we have so far. Okay. We have Ashley McDoyle from Cicero. Hello, hello, hello. Good to see you here. I know there are some staff that are uh, that are out there too. And then we have Richard James Flores from, uh, oh, hello from Columbus, Indiana. Hello, Columbus. Great to see you. Southern Indiana. Hello. All right, we got a few of those. I know there's some staff that are kind of looking. We have Corden, Indiana. Beverly, hello, Beverly down below. That's great how we can do the graphic in there. That's amazing. How do we do that? That's pretty pretty impressive. Hebron, Kentucky, all the way down to Kentucky. How's everything going, Sarah? Good to see you and your family. Hello, hello, hello. That's just wonderful. I'm coming here from a place called Irvington, Indianapolis, <laughs> on the east side. Hello, everyone from Irvington. Sarah from Cincinnati, so great to see you. We hope to make it down to Cincinnati sometime soon. Oh, Carrie Williams from Nicoleville, New York. Wow, that's the furthest one. Hello, Nicoleville. <laughs> well, great. So I think uh, it's time to start our first segment. Thank you so much for commenting where you're from this evening. We're going to uh, kick it to Becky Wolf, our science educator. And uh, MJ is with her. We're going to make a, a plant cell pizza. Hello, Becky. Hello, MJ. No. Well, and as he said, I'm here. Yep. So as you mentioned, we have MJ. So we are super excited to be swapping out our lab coats for our aprons tonight. And we are going to make a plant cell pizza. And we are going to demonstrate how to make this pizza and talk through some of the organelles, the parts of a cell. And we have a graphic up there, which will you can follow along with us. I'll tell you, we're making a few swaps from the chart based on what we had at home and plus what we really like on our pizza. So you can definitely um, sub this out. We're specifically going to make a plant cell today. And as you can see, we try to make sure that the um, parts of the cell look most like the food. 
Exactly. Well, we tried to find the food that looks most like the Exactly. So we tried really hard to do that. So the first thing we have is we have our crust. We put we put it in a, a rectangle pan because our plant cells tend to be a little bit more rectangular. And we just made this pizza crust at home. You can use whatever crust you would like. We used the family recipe. We did use our family recipe. And the first thing we're going to do to our pizza is we are going to add some sauce. So how about I spoon this on and can you spread it for me? Mm -hmm. So the crust is going to be our cell wall, which is the outside of the cell. And it's what gives plants their, their stiffness. And when you bite into a carrot, it kind of crunches because you're crunching through the cell wall. So when the crust bakes. And that's big. And by the way, that's also what makes you cry when you get an onion because you'll you'll like butchering up that that cell, um, that that like plant cell, and that w that's what lets out the um like the little gas that makes you cry. Exactly. So that's why if you like boil, um, say swim Good goggles, goggles. Um, yeah, swim goggles, scuba gear goggles, things like that. I don't know what they're called, but wait. This okay. Well, this cool. if you. Oh, fine goggles if you're a pigeon looking at it. Exactly. You Can get you? what I mean. All right. You get what so I mean. So we're going to talk a little bit more. So the crust, when it bakes up, the hard, stiff edge is going to be our cell wall. And now we've added some sauce, which is going to be our cytoplasm. And the cytoplasm is the jelly-like structure which keeps everything together. And on top of the cytoplasm, we're going to add lots of cheese. And we, my favorite part. We love cheese. So we have a big bowl here. Add cheese. The add cheese. Love cheese. Okay. The cheese isn't really um, doing much for the organelle. It's really just to hold everything together to make our model. So we're going to keep adding some cheese here. Well, I'll get the next ingredient out. Can you add a little bit more? Yeah, I love cheese. You, love you add a little bit more. Cheese. I love cheese. You I do that? Love. I'm just going to eat a little cheese. Yeah. So the next thing we're going to add is some pepperoni, and this, we're gonna add about yeah, three, we'll cut, put them right in the center. I hope we do four to make like a nice, even little square exactly. in the middle. Exactly, we'll put one more. Yep. So the pepperoni is going to be our nucleus. The nucleus is the brain of the cell. It tells the cell what to do. It also is the part of the cell that has the DNA, which um, tells the cell even more what to do. The next thing we're gonna add is the some herbs and this is going to be our ribosome. Do you want to you want to do those? What a ribosome? So we get <laughs> ribosomes. Good question. Are an organelle that produces protein, and it That's helps. It. it produces protein in the and cell, it. and the cell uses that to build more to operate to build more parts of the cell, things like that. And they're really small, so that's why we're using these little herbs. The next thing we're going to add is some red pepper and we've just cut them into strips i don't and really like i don't really like it on my pizza but I, but they are very tasty they are very tasty these are going to be our golgi bodies and golgi bodies what they do is they take the proteins that are made by those ribosomes and they package them up together so that it can be distributed throughout the cell so we're going to stack a few of those those are some great golgi bodies the next thing we have are some sliced onions and like i said you want to you want to cover your eyes to make sure you don't cut exactly and these are going to be our endoplasmic reticulum that's probably good that looks good we'll pull another little section of er over here <laughs> there i know it's stringy and what the er do is they take those packages of proteins and they deliver them throughout their cell so we have our so, er ready to go so it i think so it's basically like the cell's own little message of system. Exactly. That's exactly what it's, it is. It's That's a great analogy. Like, like if you've ever ordered something off of Amazon or something, it's because we basically have to. Um, it's basically like what the male male men and women do. Exactly. So the next they, thing they send it. The next thing we're adding is some sausage, and this is actually our favorite part of the pizza. So that's why we need to put a bunch yeah. of it. I love. How about we just eat that? <laughs> well, we'll use a bunch. We'll need to leave some room for more organelles. Fine. This is going to be our mitochondria. As I like to say, the mighty, mighty mitochondria. And they're the powerhouse of the cell. They give the yeah. cell energy. It, it's basic. Um, once again, it's like it's like a train. Um, it's like the coal for a train. Exactly. Or, or the electricity for a train. It the, depends on what type of train you're using. You know, the thing I love about cells is that there's great analogies. So now, Ooh. 
we're adding a very specific part. We're adding some green pepper chunks. I think this tongue's like the, uh, like the plant green or something. You're or exactly that. right. So all of the organelles we've added to this point are things that we have in ourselves. But we're adding these green peppers, which are our chloroplasts. And they're unique to plants. And they are filled with chlorophyll. And the chloroplasts... Chlorophyll, and chlorophyll turns the plant green. And that's also why... Um, that's why, um, when it's like fall, it, um, you just, the plants turn, ye um, the plants turn yellow, um, or brown or green or, wait, they don't turn green. Anyway, um, it's because, um, it doesn't have enough, uh, chlorophyll. Yeah. Right. And the reason chlorophyll is so important to plants is that it's where they make their own food as well. We have one yeah. last organelle to add. And we're going to make a little space for it. I always forget to leave space for this. We are adding a big, well, juicy slice of tomato. And this okay. is what? This is our vacuole. And vacuoles are the organelle in the cell which holds a lot of water. So which, when you're. Which is very fitting because it's. I know. Enough. We chose the tomatoes because they're nice and juicy. So when your plants start to get kind of weepy and droopy like this, <laughs> because you've forgotten to water them for a couple of weeks. Part of what's happening is those vacuoles in the in the cell you don't have enough water. Exactly, and so they're getting kind of droopy. So when you water the plant, it fills back up, and your plants become a lot happier. So looks like to me, I'm going to hold this up. You guys can see here's all of our organelles all ready to go. It looks like our pizza is ready. We just need yeah. to pop it in the oven, and we will see you later. Ex yeah. So we're going to go put this in the oven, and we will check back in with everybody when we got this pizza ready to go. So back to you, Josh. Well, thank you, Becky. Thank you, MJ. We'll check back with you uh, towards the end of this evening and see how that pizza's coming along. All right. I think it's time for our next giveaway. I was kind of overwhelmed with how many people are responding uh, tonight with where they are, including uh, I saw uh, Dr. Patchen, our president and CEO, and the museum is watching out there. Hello, Dr. Patchen. Good to see you. Uh, we have a lot of staff that are on board, too. You can't win the prizes, staff but you can still engage and I might read some of your stuff. So the next contest, $25 Donato's gift card. What is your favorite pizza topping? I want to hear it. Let's hear it. Let's see here. Cheese. That is a, a topping there, Richie. <laughs> Duncan. All right. You know, uh, one of my favorite toppings and people will always poo poo it, but it could probably cause you never tried it. It's kind of socially okay to say, I don't like anchovies, but guess what? I do. I like anchovies. <laughs> oh, there's so much coming in. Goodness sakes. Let's see here. We have cheese. Sarah loves the cheese. I love cheese too. Sausage, cheese, pepperoni, and more pepperoni. You know what? Donato's Pizza has pepperoni that goes all over the entire pizza. You should try that sometime if you're a pepperoni lover. Pineapple. Mandy Hockenberry says pineapple. Some that's a little bit debatable. Some people think pineapple is the greatest topping. Some people say there's no way that's a pizza, but it has pineapple on it. Love that. Pineapple and jalapenos. Brendan Chandler, good to see you out there, Brendan. I, I know you like pineapple and jalapenos. It's that culinary background, isn't it, Brendan? Luana, hello. Red onions, roasted red peppers. Oh, my goodness. So many people are coming in. Krista Grimmer, good to see you out there. And Angelina Moore, black olives. I love black olives, too. Oh, my gosh. They just keep coming in. Thank you so much for, for putting all that, uh, all those comments there. Um, sausage and pepperoni from Melissa. Okay, there's more coming in. Let's go back to our next segment here. Um, you know that $5 First Thursday is just one of the community programs that we have. We also have a program called the Access Pass. Now, the Children's Museum is proud to join forces with other area institutions to make fun family learning more accessible through the Access Pass. This program allows qualifying Indiana families on government assistance to visit the Children's Museum, as well as 11 other cultural attractions around Indiana for just $2 per person per visit. Here is one family story about how the Access Pass has impacted their life. I would say just giving my daughters the opportunity to kind of ex explore. Well, for me, I, it maybe just explore Indy and and uh, from their eyes, I guess I could say, from their perspective. Um, and for for instance, just a museum, just to come here and have like the Greece exhibit, the dinosaurs, um, the space. Like we talk about those things at home, we read about them, 
um, and for them to come here and have it at a comprehensive level for them to understand. So that's why it's important for us, um, just as a family, because they just love to just explore. It's the IRT, um, and we also uh, have gone to Connor Prairie. We, my daughters, um, I, I had just had a baby, and so I needed um, <laughs> my husband and my daughters like get out the house. And I remember seeing an email, I believe, that stated that they were part of the, the program. And um, we just looked it up, and I looked up a, a show for them to attend, and they went to the show. They loved, they loved it. And in the process, it was so easy because I wasn't able to go get the tickets myself because again, I had just had a child, but I was able to get the tickets on like via phone, and um, my husband was able to take our girls that way. I had some difficulty there. I know I did a little bit on my end to finish that, that program there, but that's a, an incredible program that we have. Uh, but now it's on to our next expert. It's time for some big dino fun. Let's learn to move and act a little bit like a T-Rex with our interpreter in Dinosphere, Luke Skulski. Thanks, Josh. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Virtual First Thursday. My name is Luke, and I'm an interpreter in Dinosphere. Now, as you can see, we're not in Dinosphere right now. While it's unfortunately true that you can't come and visit our dinosaurs right now, we thought we would bring the dinosaurs to you. Now, we've got a lot of truly spectacular dinosaurs in Dinosphere. Today, we're going to be talking about two of our more famous ones. We actually have two T-Rexes. We've got Stan, who's an adult. He's about 40 feet long, nose to tail. That's about the size of a school bus. We've also got Bucky. Bucky is just a teenager by T-Rex standards, so she's only around 30 feet long. Today, we're going to be using our imaginations to try to imagine what it would be like to be a T-Rex. So let's all stand up, everyone. Our first step in becoming a T-Rex is we're gonna give ourselves some big T-Rex teeth. I didn't bring a T-Rex tooth with me today, but I've got something pretty close, and you might be able to find one in your home. I've got a banana. Now, this is about the size of a regular T-Rex tooth, but it's also about as sharp. See, T-Rex teeth were not all that sharp, but they were super strong. So that is a good crunching tool. They can use that to crush tough things like triceratops bones. So our first step in becoming a T-Rex is we're gonna give ourselves some big T-Rex teeth. So on the count of three, you're gonna use your imaginations and turn your teeth into T-Rex teeth. One, two, three. Fantastic job, everyone. Looking very scary, perfect. Our next step is we're gonna give ourselves some T-Rex arms. A T-Rex arm is about as long as my arm right here, but imagine this arm on a 40 foot body. So we're gonna give ourselves some little T-Rex arms and now we're gonna give ourselves some claws. T-Rexes have two fingers. They've got a pointer finger and a thumb. So let's give ourselves some little T-Rex claws, perfect for grabbing on to prey and keeping them close to those teeth so we've got little pinchy claws. All right, you're starting to look like T-Rexes, but let's see if we can stand like one and move around like T-Rexes don't stand up straight like me. They lean forward, so everyone lean forward like a T-Rex. Let's bend our legs like a T-Rex, and on the count of three, we're gonna take a step forward. One, two, three. Great job, everyone. I bet a lot of you at home stopped, too. But let's think for a second what it might be like to be an animal T-Rex might wanna eat, like Triceratops. If you were a Triceratops, and you heard big stomping coming your way, you'd probably run. So if you're a T-Rex, you've got to be a little sneaky. So we're gonna go back to that pose, but this time we're gonna walk on our toes. T-Rex is actually walked on their tiptoes. So let's all sneak forward. Very good, everyone. All right, you're starting to look more and more like a T-Rex. We're missing something though. We need a T-Rex tail. T-Rexes have really long tails. A T-Rex tail is about half the body length. And the reason they have such long tails is to help them stand up. See, T-Rex has a really big head and they lean forward. 
So if you're leaning forward with a big, heavy head, you could fall flat on your face. So we need a big tail to help us stand up. I know you guys probably don't have tails, but we can use our imaginations and we do have tail bones. So let's put all of this together. We've got the big teeth, we've got the little arms, the pinchy claws, we've got our tail out, our ne legs bent, we're on our toes. On um, the count of three, we're gonna take a step forward and make a T-Rex sound. One, two, three, roar! That was great. I think we could use a little bit of a bass sound to that. So we have all of our adults join us. All right, adults at home, stand up. Now let's put all of this together. We've got the little arms, the pinchy claws, the big teeth. We're leaning forward with our tail out, our legs bent, and we're on our toes. And on the count of three, we're going to take a step forward and release our mighty T-Rex sounds. One, two, three, roar! Fantastic job, everyone. I think I heard some of you from over here. Well, have a wonderful day, everyone. Back to you, Josh. Wow, thanks, Luke. Uh, that was just a great program. You know, programs like uh, Move Like a T-Rex are what help make the visit to the Children's Museum just absolutely extraordinary. You can always encounter programs like these during the $5 first Thursday nights. It's only $5 a person from 4 to 8 p.m. the first Thursday of every month. Once the museum reopens, of course. <laughs> Thanks to Luke's extraordinary program that he just shared with us, I kind of have dinosaurs on the brain. How about you? It's time for another giveaway. $25 Donato's gift card. I want to know, what is your favorite dinosaur? You know, I was uh, talking to uh, Bucky Durflinger out in uh, South Dakota this last week, asking how he's doing with the coronavirus. He said he's doing great. Uh, Bucky's found a T-Rex that's in a dinosphere there. He says he's doing great, and people in South Dakota have been socially distancing since 1889. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. All right, let's see what we got coming in here. We gotta come down to the list. Jason Green, how you doing today? Everyone's roaring like a T-Rex. Susan, Stan, I have two T-Rex in my name. Yes, yeah, Sue the T-Rex and Stan. Oh, those are both uh, South Dakota there. Sue's up in Chicago, found his face, South Dakota. T-Rex, of course, Tiffany. That's a great dinosaur there. Triceratops. You know, Triceratops is my favorite plant-eating dinosaur. Beverly. Brachiosaurus, those big dinosaurs busting through the walls there. Elizabeth Mann says, all of them, says my daughter. <laughs> That's funny. Three boys are loving this. Alan Baringer, Baringer. that's great. Let's see here. T-Rex, T-Rex, so many T-Rexes out there. Wonderful. You know, one of my favorite dinosaurs is one that we have in Dinosaur Rex Hogwartsia. It's a dinosaur that the museum got to name. He's the Dragon King of Hogwarts. <laughs> All right. All right. You know, um, our mission as a museum is to help transform the lives of children and families. One of the ways we're able to do that is by providing free membership for foster families. Watch this video to learn a little bit more. Every child that has been placed in my home had never been to the Children's Museum until we came. And it's generally like in the first 30 days where we're all doing get to on? know you. I and might still be on. One of the places we go, I can it's some, a nice place to interact. We can talk and it's not real formal Dinosaurs. and the kids get to play. And so it's a mixture of kind of <laughs> get to I'm know your activities I can't and see, see what they like. Different. And they get to see us in a non-serious Chris White, <laughs> that's format. my brother-in-law. He said T-Rex. The biggest bit of it is being able to reach kids um, of all Corey age Collins, levels. Corey Collins, Diplodocus. The Children's Museum is a Children's Ooh, Museum. Double beam and people think it's just for kids, but as an adult, I get excited to come and see the different exhibits. And it's definitely a cross-section Jurassic. Because I have the membership, it's not a stress. We can go whenever you guys want to go. I can use it as a reward for school behavior, as a reward for home behavior. And it doesn't matter how many times we go. We can go as much as we want, and I don't have to worry about changing the budget out for us to be able to come here.
Wait, no, it's our time. Hello, so we are checking in again. Um, our pizza is still not quite done yet. But, but we are going to talk about some plant cells. And by the way, Mom, yeah. I have a leaf here, but I can't see anything. I know. I don't see any cells. So the reason you can't see any cells is because cells are microscopic or they're really, really, really tiny. So um, tinier than you, than you can imagine them. Yeah, but you can still see them with a microscope and, and even not a super... Um, high powered one, it's all good. But what we wanted to show you too was what we've been doing to start what we are calling a pizza garden. So these are some basil seeds that we um, we planted. And what we've been doing is just using old jars. So like this one is from um, this a one yogurt. Is, yeah, this one is from one of my favorite types of yogurt. And this um, I think was a, we got some candies or something in it. Wait, no mom, this was, wait. Wait, no, you, um, yeah, we did. We got candies in this, and you can actually get, um, the container at the children's museum. Exactly, yeah, those were. Because, the, um, it, there are our... these, like, I got these dino gummies at the museum store mm -hmm. once, and they are so good. Yeah. And we just used the container. We took off the label and used the container. Exactly. So, um, and what we just do is we add a little bit of dirt, and then we, for a pizza garden, we've been growing things. We started basil, we've had oregano, and the next thing we're going to start is going to be some tomatoes. Which are really good. Tomatoes. Yeah. And there's one our plant. Um, and yeah. so we <laughs> we've been growing a tomato. Uh, this pizza garden, which in the end of the summer we'll be able to have a pizza. And we also want to show you Geraldine. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, Geraldine I fine. dropped Geraldine, and also his eye fell off. She, yeah. Um, whole eye fell off, but that didn't happen when I dropped it. It yeah. happened when um we were exactly. Working. So Geraldine. this was one of our museum at home activities from. A a bunch a few weeks ago so we're actually I don't gonna think i was in that video i don't think you were i well, wasn't in the video i'm only on YouTube. yeah we are going to send it back to josh now and we will check in a few more minutes for our pizza thank you becky thank you mj sorry about some of the technical difficulties we were having here it's very difficult to uh coordinate between five different living rooms but i want to give a shout out to uh, jenny holland and megan hook there uh, there are technical people uh, on this side, they're kind of collaborating thing, kind of working with all of us. So thank you so much, that wonderful team. Uh, but I think it's time to go to uh, another segment here. Actually, we might go uh, to a giveaway here, but I wanted to kick it off to getting you thinking about the Riley Children's Health Sports Legends Experience. It's been open for, uh, for a couple of years now. We're starting our third year, seven and a half acres of sports and sports utopia. But I have a question for you before we kick it off to Derek. What is your favorite sport? Ooh, that's a tough one. Either playing or watching, what is your favorite sport? Let's see if we have a few lists here. We're still looking at the dinosaur ones. Pickleball. What is pickleball? I think I've heard of this. Kind of like badminton, kind of like a little tennis thing. Okay, we got pickleball. What else we have here? Tennis. I love playing tennis. Not that great at it. Ping pong's more my style, but tennis is fun. Football. How about those Indianapolis Colts, huh? You know, I don't know if you get a chance to watch one of our uh, museum at home programs. We had Andrew Luck with his daughter Lucy read uh, Larry Gets Lost at the Museum. That was a great book and great thing that they were able to do all together. We're going to bring you great content like that, museum at home, throughout this next month or so uh, until we kind of get back and get up and running. So uh, so keep a lookout on the Facebook and all the stuff and social media from the Children's Museum of Indianapolis. All right, we have those uh, people that are in. Thank you so much for commenting below. But now I think it's time to kick it off to the Riley Children's Health Sports Legends Experience Coach Extraordinaire and my good buddy, Derek Richter, who's going to get up and get moving with all of you. So push your couches back wherever you get. If you're sitting down, Get off of those seats and let's do some Rally Children's Health Sports Legends experience. 98, 99. Oh, thanks, Josh. Hi, friends. My name is Coach Derek from the Rally Children's Health Sports Legends experience. And today we're going to get up and get moving by doing some warm up exercises. So, with that being said, go ahead and get up, clear some space in your area, and join me. For our first exercise, we're gonna do something very simple. It's called fast feet. And all you have to do is put your legs and your feet together just like this. 
Put a very small bend in your knees, and on the count of three, we're gonna move our feet as fast as we can for 10 seconds. All right, here we go. In three, two, one, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Freeze. Whew, good start, good start. But I think we can amp it up just a little bit. So we're gonna do the exact same exercise again, but this time we're gonna switch from doing our feet close together, then to far apart, and then back together. Are you ready? All right, 10 seconds, here we go. Three, two, one, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Great work, everyone. All right, now that we've done our two easiest exercises, let's go to our third, which is jumping jacks. Most everybody knows how to do jumping jacks, but if you don't, this is what it looks like. So on the count of three, we're going to move our legs from the inside to the outside and back in, just like that. And when our feet go to the outside, our hands are gonna come up into the air, just like a big star, and then back down to our sides when we come in. All right, are you ready? 10 jumping jacks, here we go. Three, two, one, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Great job, awesome work. We're keeping our bodies active and healthy. All right, so for our next exercise, we're gonna do something called a scissor jump. And we're gonna turn our legs into a pair of scissors. So if I do this from the side, all we're doing is having one foot forward, one foot back with a bend in our knees, and we're gonna switch our legs just like a pair of scissors. All right, are you ready for 10 seconds? Here we go, three, two, one, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wow, you guys are awesome. Very good. So for our next exercise, it's probably one of my favorites. It is called a kangaroo jump. Now, we all know that kangaroos can jump pretty high. So the goal of this exercise is to get the back of our foot as high off the ground as possible. And it might look a little something like this. Whoa, I know, pretty high, I've been practicing a lot. All right, so we're gonna do this 10 times, but this time when we count, let's count backwards from 10 all the way down to one. All right, here we go. In three, two, one, go. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Woo, that got my heart pumping. We are almost there, everybody. Stay with me. All right, so for our next exercise, now that we've jumped like kangaroos, we need to climb a mountain as fast as we can. So go ahead and take your hands and put them on the ground just like this. One leg all the way behind us and the other leg up by our chest. Now when I say go, we're gonna switch our feet as fast as we can for 10 seconds, just like we're climbing a mountain. All right, here we go in three, two, one, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Very, very good, everyone. Okay, go ahead and stand up. Now, we completed the main part of our workout, but no warm up is complete without a proper cool down. So, one of my favorite cool downs is called a windmill. So, everybody, go ahead and hop your feet out just like this. Take your arms and put them to the sides. Wave one hand in the air and take that hand and cross it over your body down to your opposite foot. And make sure you're stretching that hand up way to the sky and come back up to the middle. Now take your other hand that you didn't just use and put that down across your body and stretch up to the sky. Very good, come back up to the middle. Let's do that two more times, ready? Down and stretch, back up. Last time, this hand, down and stretch and back up. Take a deep breath in. Very, very good, everyone. Go ahead and give yourselves a round of applause because I am giving you all a round of applause as well for staying active and healthy with me. Now remember, 
staying active and healthy for at least 60 minutes a day can keep our bodies and our minds super active as well. All right, back to you, Josh. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. A lot of comments below saying, way to go, Derek. I think they're from a lot of staff, but uh, looks like you built up a little bit of work out there. Uh, I'm sweating too, but for other reasons, I'm wearing a, a suit jacket, a tie, and pajama pants. That's what I'm wearing today. But we have some uh, comments that came through about their favorite sports. I want to read a few of them. Teresa Groma says, soccer is a favorite there. Uh, I got one from Lisa Blair Terrell uh, that says, Jasmine says, cheerleading and soccer. But hers is a uh, basketball, and we definitely enjoy the museum's outdoor sports area. I love the Rally Children's Health Sports Legends experience, too. It's a lot of fun. Softball and gymnastics, Addison Sprague says that. That's wonderful. Let's see. We have uh, Elisa Travers, Carl, basketball. Love basketball. Love our Pacers. Love our Fever. Hope they get to play again soon. Volleyball. I saw bowling on here as well. Stephanie Miller, bowling. Uh, mini golf. We have a very unique experience out in the Sports Legends experience uh, with our, our, our miniature golf. It's it's not really – it's just amazing. You have to come and check it out. All right. I think we're ready to uh, go to uh, back to Becky. I heard the pizza is done. So let's check in with that plant cell pizza one last time. Hello! So you are right. The we, pizza is looking great and it's also done. And so we wish we had smell vision because we wish you guys could smell this because, because it smells. it smells delicious. It does. And if we could teleport the pizza, we teleport it to you guys too. Exactly. But we... So the next part that's really, really important to making a plant cell pizza is that you've got to eat it. So we're going to... We have some plates here. This is for you. There's it's for me and it has a few of those red peppers so it has my Golgi bodies I love red peppers and I decided to take this piece which has a bunch of clawed glass um, and a bunch of the other things I think it has some mitochondria on there yeah. so just a reminder that um, we have a graphic up there so what we did is we used a school a rectangle pizza crust to make our plant cell and we add the pizza toppings for organelles so we have our nucleus we have our vacuoles, our chloroplast, our endoplasmic reticulum, our ribosomes, cell wall. So I think I've got, I think I covered it. But so you can definitely check out our graphic there and we'll have all this information too on the museum's blog. And I think it's time for us to take a big old bite and check out this pizza. And uh, we'll send it back to you, Josh, as we try our pizza. I hope it make you hungry, really hungry. Well, I'll just be tasty. Good stuff. That did make me very hungry. Thank you so much, MJ, and thank you, Becky, for making that pizza. I might... I'm not presenting. Maybe I'm not in there. I might still be. Hello again. I am definitely hungry for some pizza. Luckily, we have some Donato's Pizza here, one of our uh, sponsors for the first Thursday evening. And I like to bring my son in here. He's here at home. This is. Theo, and Theo has been a part of the museum for a few years. He's in, uh, in our preschool at the Children's Museum. He was there. He's in kindergarten now. Your head's kind of getting cut off. Can you just kind of, there you go. He's our preschool. Uh, Theo, uh, what do you miss most about the museum? I miss most about of going out to Sports Legends Experience. He liked the Sports Legends Experience, and I think this year is the year he's going to kick a field goal through that big upright. Did you do it once before? Mm, I think I just hit the rim. <laughs> hit, the, hit the edge of it all? Well, thank you, Theo. Here, enjoy some Donato's pizza while I kind of wrap this up here. Okay, uh, I think you might have missed us too. So we're going to get into our last giveaway for the evening. This one is for a museum membership. Comment what you miss most about the museum. Let's go and see if some comments right now. Yeah, go ahead and dig in, Theo. You want to get on screen too? <laughs> a. You know what I miss most about the museum and uh, it's really all the people. I think we've been in uh, kind of uh, uh, in the house for a long time. I miss all the staff. I love seeing some names here. Kate Emmert and uh, Megan Ryle is there with her family. I saw Jenny Reber on here. I miss everyone that's through there. So I can't wait to get back and see everyone there. Let's see if we have some comments below. Hey, it looks like people are saying hi to Theo. Lisa Anderson, that was your preschool teacher. Miss Anderson said hello too. 
Dan Davis, hello there. Well, we definitely miss having you all at the Children's Museum of Indianapolis. All right. We, again, want to thank all of our wonderful sponsors. We have our uh, presenting sponsor, Delta Dental, who brought you these teeth. Oh, <laughs> and our supporting sponsor, Donato's Pizza. We hope tonight you've got a glimpse of the museum. If you are ready to make a tax deductible donation of any amount to the museum when the time is right for you and your family, we would be, uh, we would be really grateful. Uh, please help us continue to serve our families and fulfill our mission with programs like $5 first Thursday nights, the access pass and our free foster family memberships, just to, just to name a few. And please be sure to check us out on the first Thursday of every month. Uh, we are free for, or we have $5 from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. on the first Thursday of every month once the museum reopens there. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for your support. And we can't wait to see you again at the world's biggest and best yes. Children's Museum of Indianapolis. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone.